I'm going to shift gears and we're going to hear from Kepser um, Actus, who is an associate professor at Gazi University. Um, and he started off uh, studying number theory and now more generally is interested in how, sorry, she. It's fine. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> and now more generally, that is a terrible gender stereotype. We're not going to get into it. Go, you are lovely. Um, do mathematics ability and versus mathematics disability. Thank you. <laughs> so let me share my screen. Um, so this one and share. Can you see my screen? Yep, that's coming in. Oops, sorry. Okay. So, <laughs> um, first of all, yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, everybody. It's midnight in Ankara right now. I'm talking from Turkey, Ankara. First of all, I would like to thank organizers for having me here. Uh, however, my background is highly focused on number theory. Recently, I became more interested in uh, how brain learn mathematics and uh, what are the factors um, involved in learning processes. Um, as a mathematician, I usually come across people saying that uh, they are not good at maths. Uh, for some people, learning math can be as a nightmare. Uh, I was wondering uh, what, uh, what would be the factors that affect learning mathematics? Why are all these people thinking in this way? So last year, uh, I'm awarded by Chivening uh, Scholarship uh, Program and did my second master's uh, on neuroscience and education uh, in University of Bristol in the UK. Uh, so in this talk, I would like to present a brief summary of key components of research, both in cognitive neuroscience um, and um, uh, mathematics education. Uh, and first of all, uh, um, uh, let's have a look at this piece of uh, school report. Uh, Ellen Turing uh, was, uh, was a talented mathematician and also one of the first computer scientists. Uh, this piece of page of Turing, uh, Turing's report card was from 1929 when Turing was about 17 years old and attending the Sorbonne uh, School in England. Uh, his French was considered fair and his uh, process uh, were weak and his reading was apparently weak as well. Uh, his essays showed ideas that were more uh, grandiose than pointed. Uh, it's a common trait throughout uh, Turing's report cards that he did much better in maths and science than he did in the languages. Uh, this is not too bad, but many of Turing's uh, earlier report cards, like this one, were more harsh. Uh, this particular you know, one includes his maths teacher's comments that his work shows distinct uh, promise, uh, but uh, he must realize that the ability to put a neat and tidy solution on a paper is uh, necessary for a first-rate mathematician. And his physics teacher says that in order to get into Cambridge, he will need to show sound knowledge rather than vague ideas. Uh, with these vague ideas, Turing would go on to uh, uh, crack the Enigma encryption that Germany used during World War II. Uh, and helped uh, to end the war. Uh, he, in, he envisioned computers as the tool for which we use them today as um, he gave one of the first lectures to mention the idea of comp uh, computer intelligence, the idea uh, from which the field of artificial intelligence would grow. Uh, <laughs> um, all his works uh, may show that he has a math ability, I guess so. So how we define math stability then? Um, it's uh, one of the strongest indicators of hum human intelligence, defined as capability of doing numeracy and arithmetical skills, as well as developing problem-solving structures. In contrast, uh, maths disability is known as impairment of number processing skills that occur more than two years of experience. Um, so uh, there are genetic and neurobiological backgrounds of understanding developmental disorders, such as dyscalculia. Um, at genetics level, 
uh, genome-wide association studies investigate associated uh, genes related to MATS ability. Uh, these are case control studies. Uh, MATS ability is a complex trait, and MATS disability is due to multiple uh, genes of small effect size. Um, these uh, studies bring two uh, genetic research area called quantitative and molecular genetics. And these are two examples uh, of genetics research related to understand gene association regarding MATS ability. Uh, this, uh, the first study conducted in the UK with 600 young students, according to the, the results, a candidate gene, a neuronal, uh, neuronal cell uh, adhesion molecule is also so associated with many genes generated small effect, uh, effects across the entire spectrum of ability. The other study in 2017 conducted in, Ch in China claims that the gene SPOC1, called SPOC1, is associated with MATS ability. Um, so, Matt's gene has found. <laughs> but on the other side, research shows that uh, this particular gene is also associated with tumor progression as well as neurogenesis. Uh, this suggests uh, that from educational point of uh, view, genes should not be blamed of causing these diseases or disorders uh, by themselves. Uh, after reading this research, actually, I thought that I do hope I do hope that I don't have met gene as well, <laughs> because I don't like the <laughs> tumor progression. Um, so um, uh, this diagram, uh, this research from uh, this Schmecht and uh, Grabner in 2015 uh, diagrammed the research, uh, the connections in between cognitive neuroscience and maths education. Uh, so the aim of common research of cognitive neuroscience and math education is combining the data from psychological research and educational research and trying to answer the problems uh, which is not answered by behavioral uh, research, behavioral data. Uh, so uh, we would uh, look at these uh, three types shortly. Uh, so neurounderstanding uh, 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 aims to explore cognitive processes and strategies uh, before um, a behavior uh, occurs. So um, let's have uh, let's think about this problem solving uh, process. So before getting the answer, uh, the um, research uh, looks at what happens behind uh, before getting the answer of a particular mathematics question. Uh, so you, uh, so uh, for understanding this, neuroscientific imaging tools uh, are used. Uh, if, uh, um, particular, there are some research uh, in uh, some specific um, micro micro level uh, research area in maths education and micro level research in maths education. So the problem is dependent on the research question, both in cognitive neuroscience and maths education. Not all types of questions are uh, cannot be answered in uh, using two uh, these two research areas. So there is an intersection in between the two research areas. Common uh, research um, is on uh, very elementary uh, is uh, understanding on very elementary uh, numerical and arithmetical processes. Uh, more complex uh, mathematical problems needs to be um, studied by neuroscientific research. Uh, and uh, they need to be uh, discussed uh, with the domain specific uh, processes and domain general processes. This needs to be linked uh, with several parts of brain uh, and um, me at mi micro level. That uh, means um, high resolution uh, uh, needs to be uh, used. And um, Butterworth uh, um, uh, and uh, his uh, research friends in 2011 uh, made a um, map related to the questions which can be studied um, by means of maths education and cognitive neuroscience. And they uh, uh, divided into the categories at behavioral level, cognitive level, and biological level, as well as genetics. So these are the um, uh, parts. Mm, and um, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, so for, uh, from neuroprediction, this means uh, it, it tells us about individual differences 
um, and uh, this, uh, uh, understand the, uh, certain types of educational interventions. And uh, this needs to be uh, uh, a good collaboration in between neuroscientists and maths education, uh, educators to work together to understand the different individual differences. What are the individual differences? Giftedness is one of the individual differences, as well as uh, um, having a disability like dyscalculia. Uh, developmental dyscalculia is a mathematical disorder, and uh, it's estimated that 70, almost 70 percent of uh, young children have this uh, dyscalculia. Uh, it's um, highly related with dyslexia, but unfortunately, uh, the National um, um, Institute of Health uh, made a research since uh, 2000, and uh, uh, funds are more related to dyslexia, but less with dyscalculia. So it needs to be worked. And also with the neuroscience, neuro understanding part of the research. So the images uh, uh, shows um, imper uh, imperial uh, sulcus, uh, angular sulcus, uh, fusiform gyrus is more linked with uh, dyscalculia. Uh, children uh, with dyscalculia um, have um, um, high um, um, uh, um, have different images compared to the control group, and uh, so the, these are uh, these two graphs uh, shows bit in between the neuroscientific research and the applications in um, maths education. Uh, the neuro uh, neuro intervention is more related to teach for teachers. Uh, it's uh, to inform educational interventions. Um, it doesn't uh, uh, gives a, a give a prescription uh, for teachers to what to do in the classroom, but it offers um, um, some suggestions combined with pedagogical principles. And uh, uh, actually understanding the working memory capacity, increasing the working memory capacity is one of the most important parts uh, in maths education. And according to the research in 2014 by Gilmore, um, uh, a survey shows that mathematics teachers have don't, don't know so much about the meaning of working memory. However, all we, uh, all the calculations in our brain related to maths education is involved in working memory and using executive functions. Uh, human brain is highly plastic uh, and it's shaped by experiences in educational environments. Uh, so uh, genetics factor, genetic factors may be affected on learning but environment can change everything. So these are also, these two um, research areas also are connected to each other. Mathematics education directly affects brain development and a, a true understanding of the plasticity as well as its uh, limits uh, presents an important item on the uh, future research agenda. Um, so the environment factors such as testing students using the right sc uh, scales, intelligence scales for children to understand the, their intelligence, teachers reports, parents, school, um, academic motivation are some of the uh, important environment factors that affect um, students' learning, especially maths anxiety and motivation is very important uh, for a discipline like mathematics. And uh, neuromyths, also um, uh, other um, neuro interventions that needs to be studied uh, uh, much more for teachers. For example, boys are uh, uh, better at maths than girls. So these kind of uh, statements, how, uh, how did they come from? So what are the origins of these um, neuromyths? Like, for example, left brain people are better um, in mathematical sciences than right brain people. Um, right brain people are more artists. These are the statements that are not um, actually true. And the teacher uh, training in, in, in these kind of um, subjects are important. I'm also um, working on uh, these right now, training math teachers about neuroscientific research. Uh, and uh, so that's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's with me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? So I will abuse my power and ask a question while other people formulate um, theirs. 
you you touched on this on your talk that um, like to perform mathematics requires a lot of different cognitive abilities like working memory, like spatial reasoning, if it's geometry, mm -hmm. um, is it possible to be like bad at math? Like, is there an overarching gene or structure or something that could encompass all of these, like the disparate things that you need to be good at math? Um, I wondered like what you thought of, of that. Yeah, as I told uh, at the beginning about genes, there are some genes that may be involved in um, uh, your math ability. But it, uh, uh, but if you don't have a, a very specific disease that uh, hinders you to um, learn something, for example, if you can't um, 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 involve um, memories, if improve memories. So it's uh, because of a, a specific disease. So it can affect your learning. But if uh, we are talking about um, a, a very um, a regular uh, person uh, with a regular brain functioning, so it depends on the exercise, especially for mathematics. So um, if environment um, provides you a good quality of education with uh, good materials that you can understand, so uh, you can improve uh, your uh, math level up to a, a, a point. Uh, but uh, uh, for sure, for example, if you like to be advanced in mathematics, maybe some biological factors in your brain should be related, uh, sh uh, uh, can, can help you. Um, like, for example, Alan Turing's. Uh, uh, um, I don't know about uh, any kind of research, brain research about his brain, uh, but with Einstein, for example, um, uh, I read a research about Einstein brain, and they say he had a, uh, he had um, uh, the volume of his brain was a little bit uh, higher than uh, compared to the normal brains, uh, which means sulci, the amount of sulci he has um, um, more than the other people. So maybe it may affect. <laughs> Awesome. So I'm just going to quickly, since technically we are in the third.